The Vivo XL3 is a sub $200 smartphone and it's the first smartphone from Blue that runs Android 8.0 Oreo out of the box. It features a 5.5 inch 18 by 9 LCD display with a 720 by 1440 resolution and 292 pixel per inch index. I'm happy to see an 18 by 9 display with fairly thin bezels for a budget smartphone, uh, but the pixel density is subpar resulting in content that doesn't appear very crisp or sharp. Color reproduction, however, is satisfactory and there are good viewing angles with little color shift. The build is constructed primarily out of plastic, which brings me back to the old days of blue smartphones. Uh, it looks really sleek and flashy with its metallic finish, but since it's plastic, it's gonna pick up a lot of micro scratches over time and it does feel slimy and cheap to the touch. I will say the phone is extremely lightweight, coming in at around 143 grams. It's also available in gold and silver color options. We do have a headphone jack, we have a rear-facing speaker that doesn't sound great and is in a pretty poor location, a micro SD card slot for expandable storage, and a rear-facing fingerprint scanner. Now the scanner, it does work well and it unlocks the phone consistently. And unlike the speaker grill, it's actually in a great location. I'm able to easily reach it with my index finger. Blue says it can unlock the phone in 0.2 seconds, but it doesn't quite perform that consistently or quickly for me. The XL3 is the first blue smartphone running Android Oreo, and while it doesn't run pure stock Android, the skin is much more subdued when compared to previous blue skins. You don't have the quick settings and notifications split up like uh, in previous blue phones. The app drawer swipes up from the bottom, and Google Now is a swipe away via the default launcher, which is really nice to see. You will see some retextured icons and some added features in the settings as well as some Amazon bloatware, but hey, even so, I still believe this is a step in the right direction when compared, once again, to other skinned blue smartphones. So with Android Oreo, there's a handful of really neat features now available. You can now snooze notifications quickly and easily. A picture-in-picture -picture mode will minimize the app you are in to allow you to navigate to a different area of your device. Google's Autofill API is now available to help you quickly sign into your favorite apps. You now have themed notifications. There's even an expanded native file manager built in via the Downloads app. You get all of these features in a sub $200 smartphone. The MediaTek quad-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM also helps keep this phone running pretty well for the price, but hey, don't expect it to win any marathons. It'll handle basic social media apps and web browsing and light gaming, but that's about it. This, it's pretty slow at times. There is a 13 megapixel main and selfie camera with plenty of different camera modes to play around with. The f2.0 aperture helps the phone compete with some of the others in its price category when capturing low light photos. However, I did notice sharpness and detail decrease quite a bit when in poorly lit environments. It's the 13 megapixel front facing camera sensor that is really the most impressive of the two sensors, but that might have something to do with the excellent subject matter. <laughs> Last but not least is the 3000 milliamp hour battery with support for fast charging. Blue phones usually have pretty solid battery life and the XL3 is no exception. It should last you a full day of moderate to heavy usage on a single charge, thanks again to the improved battery optimizations made available via Android Oreo. So there you have it, the Blue Vivo XL3. If you're watching this on launch day, you can actually head over to Amazon and pick it up for $109.99. This sale will only last for around 24 hours, so you better act quick and visit the link in the description. The price will then shoot up to about $190, which makes this more of a tough sell when you consider some of the other offerings from Huawei and Motorola. But since there are some premium flagship smartphones on the market that still do not have Android Oreo, I think it's pretty neat to see a sub $200 phone with Oreo running out of the box. Let me know what you think of this device in the comment down below. As always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.